So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. And uh, today I received uh, a question from a rather rather young microscopist, 17 years old, and uh, he's got a technical question. And uh, I'd like to talk about this because I think it is a pretty yeah, significant uh, question that I think uh, is worth uh, sharing it with you. So I'll read out the question first uh, and uh, then I'll give you my opinion on this. Hi, I am, and here's the name, I'm a young guy who's 17 years old and who's uh, just amazed with microbiology, especially protists. I own an Omax M83EZ and I've owned it since 2016. I'm thinking that it might be a good thing to change to better microscope since I had already had several problems with this one and I also think that I have seen um, all I could with it. Uh, I, I then asked what the problems are and he said there's some electronic problems and in any case he wants to upgrade. I'm thinking of upgrading to a Swift Stellar 1 with achromatic objectives because achromatic objectives can give me more opportunities to change the 20 times and 60 times, but I have a question. How can the LED bulb be changed in case it dies? Is there any way to fix this in, in the future? And how easy um, is it to find this uh, weird kind of connector in case it fails? So first of all, thank you for the question. I mean, there are several points that you mentioned in your email that I would like uh, to talk about. Um, for the other viewers who don't know this yet, I had also a follow-up email here uh, with the OMAX. There are some electrical problems as well after all it is already a few years old five years yeah and there are some issues with that uh, that might appear i mean yeah those uh, electrical components are sometimes prone to fail i've seen we've seen this as well also with uh, high-end or better microscopes that uh, we're using in school um, there were also some electrical problems so it's nothing unusual in that sense um, but really the point that i think you're mentioning here is that um yeah, the serviceability. We don't mind so much if a part occasionally fails or if parts become damaged because of improper use. This can also happen. I mean, especially in the educational sector, it can happen that uh, students, uh, they dip the non-oil objectives into immersion oil or they get it covered in mounting medium or they crash the objectives into the microscope slide. So things can become damaged. Um, uh, you know, yeah, eyepieces might drop, <laughs> whatever. Um, um, so this is something that is to be expected in everyday use. Um, but what is important is, is, is to what extent is can the microscope be maintained and serviced? And this was actually one of your main concerns here because you've experienced that the other microscope that you've got, you're running into issues and it cannot be easily serviced or it might not be worth servicing. Um, and maybe it's all a question of the availability of spare parts um, so and uh, for this reason i do understand your question and there is also another important point that you're making here is is there are two uh, versions of uh, the microscope of the stellar one that you're talking about one version is the one that i have over here that is the one with the infinity optics a very nice microscope uh, with plan objectives so it gives you a sharp image all the way to the edges especially important for photography but you were considering to, to buy the slightly least cheaper um, but also good one um, with the standard uh, achromatic uh, objectives I mean these are also achromatic but the standard achromatic objectives I mean the 160 millimeter standard one uh, slightly cheaper and you want to buy that uh, because it's more easily um, possible to exchange objectives because there are more of them available specifically what you're interested in the 20 times and 60 times which I highly recommend especially if you want to observe protests I think uh, the 20 times objective is a very very good uh, uh, magnification here and um, you're kind of concerned that uh, the objectives for infinity objectives are not quite as available and you have you are correct first of all infinity objectives are company specific they're proprietary so this means that um, they work together with a tube lens which is inside the microscope and they have to be optically compatible but also they have to be able to fit mechanically and this is company specific and now because there are not so many infinity microscopes around in the low cost area for this reason it is indeed more difficult to obtain infinity objectives if you want to upgrade in any case using infinity then i would first directly email the supplier and ask them if they have um, yeah infinity objectives available and if they do then please immediately order one because maybe in the future they might not have it available and with the larger brands i mean those microscopes uh, like olympus Zeiss, uh, nikon and leica they are huge brands and they basically uh, will always have more or less uh, spare parts available uh, but i'm talking about the smaller brands here and there it might be 
indeed a little bit more uh, difficult to uh, to find uh, yeah, replacement objectives. So this is something that I fully understand here, and I will tell you that the image quality will not be so much uh, is not so much different from the um, in, yeah, Infinity Plan ones uh, to good uh, to good uh, um, yeah, traditional objectives of the 160 millimeter standard. Um, but the other question that you've got is uh, about the exchange of the LED. Okay, so first uh, good news and the parts are not soldered into place uh, like I've seen all those other uh, microscopes where it's not possible so easily to exchange it but uh, it is possible to exchange the LED module. Now the question is now the same where do you get an, a replacement LED module from? Um, I would say again here directly contact and write an email um, to the to the company and ask them. I have found those LED modules also quite cheaply online because these are standard LED modules and they cost a, a fraction of the price compared to the when you order them uh, over the microscope company. So I don't know for a couple of euros or dollars you're already getting 10 of these LED modules. They really um, yeah, are sold in wholesale. Um, so that uh, is should also not be a problem. Um, and in worst case if you cannot get a, an LED uh, then you just make one yourself. You just use an old credit card or plastic card and you cut it into shape and uh, put it into, um, yeah, into the microscope and then you're able to screw in the plastic card with the LED on top of it should work. Okay, you are concerned about the um, the connector. Um, yes, these are also standard connectors. Um, you can, if you know uh, what they're called, uh, they're, then you can also look for them. Um, especially in when you're into model cars and model airplanes, you use those connectors also for connecting batteries, so they are available. Um, however, um, if I were to replace the LED, um, then I would simply probably clip it off and solder it together, or simply yeah, turn put the wires together yeah, manually and, and put some insulation material over it should also work. I know it might not sound quite as professional but um, it's a workable solution in any case. Um, the nice thing about the ability to exchange the LED yourself is that you're also able to experiment around with different um, yeah, colors of LEDs. Okay, um, So this is also something that uh, is uh, is possible. Um, but uh, my suggestion again is, is uh, either try to type in the part number um, of uh, the LED module and try to find it there. Uh, online maybe on eBay or Amazon or some other retailer, electronics retailer, or directly contact uh, the company, but be aware that it might be more expensive. Yeah, last but not least, I have a recommendation for microscope brands and microscope companies out there. Um, I've, I'm receiving many emails um, and also many comments on my YouTube channel where people ask me um, about uh, yeah, spare parts, replacement, upgradability, and so on in case things break, um, especially if the microscope is used in an education educational settings. I mean, it's microscopes need to be service, serviced. And um, what I've seen now when you go online is, is that many microscope companies, they sell microscopes, of course, also on Amazon or on the, their website. But very often you do not see so many spare parts available, not so many spare objectives. Um, what happens if, I don't know, if an eyepiece breaks yeah, because you drop it to the floor? It can happen in schools, for example. Yeah? Um, and in many cases I've seen that um, those companies, they yeah, they don't um, have the larger range uh, of accessories um, available. Or what happens if the filter holder, which is made of plastic, okay, um, what happens if it breaks, okay, because somebody pulls on it too strongly and it breaks off? Yeah? Where can you get a replacement one? Um, and many uh, microscope companies they develop new microscope, the new models, and every couple of years you see a new one uh, coming out. In many cases, they're quite similar anyway because the optics are always the same. Uh, but uh, they do not seem to invest a lot in, in support. Yeah? Um, or at least support that's easily accessible. Maybe, uh, maybe in manuals on how to maintain the microscope better and how to replace parts and so on. And uh, what I've however seen is that many uh, microscope users, uh, they are concerned about that. Um, of course, the big four company, uh, four brands, Olympus, Tess, Nike, and Leica, they of course have a huge um, yeah, support infrastructure available. And that's why universities and research educations and, and research institutions and educational institutions, why they buy microscopes from them, because um, yeah, you, you have a lot a large support there and spare parts available. But I'm seeing that this is not so much the case with the smaller brands. And I basically say the following, this is now a recommendation to the smaller microscope brands 
if you just limit your number of microscope models uh, somehow to a handful of models and really provide more support for them then I think you're also going to attract a lot of customers and then less people will write me emails but you can keep on writing me emails of course I'm glad for any questions because this also gives me of course more opportunities uh, to talk about this in my YouTube channel okay I think I'm just gonna leave it at that happy micro hunting as always and uh, see you around next time bye bye